It's Tuesday, the 22nd of June. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. On the 18th of June, another Cirrus was lost to a fatal accident in Conway, Arkansas. Not a lot of information out on this accident at this time. However, it does present some very important AQP, Advanced Qualification Program, concepts that we need to discuss. According to the locals there at Conway, Conway, Arkansas is an uncontrolled airport, a fairly long runway. This was a student pilot departing in a Cirrus aircraft, SR-22, I believe, on a student pilot flight. And once he got up and around the airport, he started uh, talking on the Unicom about problems with airspeed, lack of airspeed. His airspeed was not working correctly. As he staggered around the pattern to make his way back for an emergency landing, the aircraft crashed short of the runway, killing the student pilot. There was no parachute deployment in this crash. The NTSB is investigating and they'll have the full information soon. And according to the locals, some people say that they found the pedo cover on the airspeed, on the pedo tube, blocking the airspeed indication for the aircraft. Let me show you right here on the Husky what I'm talking about. There's the pedo tube, and oftentimes these pedo tubes are covered with a cover to prevent bugs from getting in there or water from getting in there and blocking the pedo static system. The pedo tube, of course, is the thing that measures the airspeed of the aircraft. So loss of airspeed represents a major AQP item. This, several items. First, let's start with pre-flight. Pre-flight the aircraft, make sure the pedo covers are removed. Make sure all the remove before flight covers are off the airplane. Seems pretty simple, right? But you do your one pre-flight and then consider doing what I call kind of an idiot check. I'll take, do one more walk around the aircraft because when I'm pre-flighting aircraft at airports, there's a lot of people showing up and we're talking and we're talking about airplanes and you're distracted. And so I got to do one more walk around to make sure, did I put the fuel caps on? Did I take the tow bar off? Do I got the pedo covers off? Did I close all the doors and hatches onto the airplane? One more walk around the airplane from a distance before stepping into the airplane. The other thing, well, let me back up a little bit. Just getting back from flying the line after being off for three months, on, in the airlines, it's all hands on deck. We are short pilots. The COVID situation has exacerbated the problem. A lot of folks have retired. And as you know, it takes some training sometimes, depending on what kind of a leave you've taken from the airline to get back up to speed, to get back on the line, to, to fly the line. So we're backfilling in the 777, we're backfilling a lot of the domestic flying with the 777, and it's just chock full. Four flights a day, LA to Miami. So, where am I going with this? So the airlines are looking at a longer range problem here of backfilling the pilot shortage, and one of those solutions is going to be to go out to these larger 141 pilot training schoolhouses, schools, and subsidizing to some degree or at least consider the concept of implementing AQP advanced qualification type of training early into a young pilot's flight training program because if you're grooming a pilot to go to the airlines he's going to need to be familiar with this anyways as soon as he hits his ATP qualifications at the airline so why not start learning that stuff right now so AQP item number two rejected takeoff how many times in a single engine airplane have you briefed and considered a rejected takeoff? You'd think normally that's something you'd consider for a twin engine airplane, but no, there are rejected takeoff considerations in a single engine airplane, and a lack of airspeed is one of those considerations. Something you need to do for every takeoff, especially in an airliner, every time we take off in an airliner, we check our airspeed at 80 knots. It's a mandatory call out, 80 knots, checked. One pilot looks at the airspeed indicator and calls out when that airspeed indicator goes through 80 knots and the other pilot verifies that his airspeed indicator, because there's two of them in an airliner, that it matches. And that tells us a lot of things. That means they haven't left the cover on the pedo tubes, the static system is not covered up, but also the FMC, the flight management, or correction, the flight data computers are 
in agreement. There's no problems with the computers on board the aircraft. So if there was a problem, you could catch it right then and do a real easy low speed reject at 80 knots if in the event that your airspeed is not reading accurately enough. Other reasons to consider a reject for a single engine aircraft may be a lack of performance to meet the requirements for the takeoff for that airport at that elevation, at that weight, uh, at that density altitude. You might want to consider a point on that airstrip that if you, you don't have the desired amount of performance that you need to make this departure that you should consider rejecting the takeoff. It's always better to go off the end of the runway slowly than it is to go off of the end of the runway at flying speed and into the trees. And third, unusual airspeed indications. This is a memorized, what we call red box item in the airlines, which is now a QRC or quick reaction checklist item. But it's something that you need to have basically memorized and able to pull off right away. Unusual ad, uh, airspeed indications, same thing in a small airplane as is in a large airliner fly the airplane, you got to click off any automation that you have connected to the aircraft, and then you have to set a known pitch and power setting. It's as simple as putting the radiator cap on the horizon and setting a high power cruise power setting and flying the aircraft, and then just come on in at a higher rate of speed, plan on a long landing to a longer runway, and safely bring the thing back around without an airspeed indicator. This would be a very daunting situation for a brand new student pilot, especially a brand new student pilot that hasn't been introduced to some of these AQP concepts before they even soloed. And this is something I think the general aviation industry should consider is introduce some of these AQP concepts very early, I mean pre-solo into a young pilot's career. It's a lot of stuff to consider. It's a fire hose, but if you're going to consider a career in the airlines, you're going to be drinking from a fire hose your entire career. That's just the way it is. That's the way you need to be able to learn fast. So unusual airspeed indications or a lack of airspeed indication, another very standard AQP item in the airline industry it needs to be introduced into the general aviation industry very early in a pilot's career. Hopefully we will see the AQP program introduced into part 141 schools as they spool up to backfill the pilot shortage that is so desperately needed in the airline industry today. Thank you so much for your support of this channel and for all the patrons over on Patreon that make this content possible as every time we talk about a fatal aircraft accident here on YouTube, this content is often demonetized. Thanks so much for your support. See you here. And if you're learning to fly right now, I highly recommend checking out the Finer Points flight training app available at Apple and available to download on your iPad as it will help you tremendously as you slog through the books and all the FARs to learn the answers to all the questions that you need to know to pass your FAA written examination as well as practical examples of what you need to know to, pa to pass your FAA practical exam as well. Check it out, Finer Points Flight Training App.